Have you ever been in a circumstance or a situation where you have done everything that you possibly can to try to solve the dilemma or bring yourself through a crisis only to find that everything that you had done was just completely futile? Uh, you, you were on your back. You had no place to look other than up, and, and you were needing something uh, desperately. Uh, most of us at some point in our lives can probably relate to that particular type of a situation in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Maybe even you thought about that uh, as I was mentioning that to you uh, in, in this opening question. But uh, today, what we want to do is we want to look at some scriptural passages that come out of Luke's Gospel, chapter 8. Many of you have probably uh, heard this story before, but it, uh, it, it stands as a reminder to each and every one of us of the power of God and what He wants to do uh, in each and every one of our lives. So grab your Bible, uh, come on back. In just a moment, we're going to be looking at passages that come out of Luke's Gospel, chapter Chapter 8. See you in just a minute. Hey folks, welcome to the Wednesday Bible Study of Central Baptist Church of Oak Ridge, North Carolina. I pray that your day has been going well, and we're so glad uh, that you have chosen to uh, to join us for our Bible study this evening. As I mentioned a moment ago, we're going to be looking at passages that come out of Luke's Gospel, chapter 8. So if you've got your Bible, uh, and I want to encourage you to do that. Have that with you, you know, when we have our times of Bible study. But Luke's Gospel, chapter 8, and uh, we're only going to be looking at a handful of verses. Uh, now, most of us probably thought of a circumstance or a situation uh, when I gave you the opening question or opening comment of our Bible study today, uh, when I asked you if there'd ever been a circumstance or a situation in your life uh, that, that you tried everything earthly possible. I mean, you, you, you had to throw money at it. You had to throw time at it. You did everything that you possibly could, but did not get the, either the answer to your question, the healing that, that you needed, uh, or, or whatever the circumstance uh, may have been. And, and you had no place else to look. Uh, other than to the Lord. Well, today we're going to look at some passages that should teach us that that should be the very first place uh, that we should go. Most of us, I, I'm, as I mentioned, are familiar with this passage, but we're going to look at uh, the touching of the hem of the garment of Christ out of Luke's Gospel, chapter 8, and we're going to begin reading with verse 43. Luke's Gospel, chapter 8, uh, beginning with verse 43. Uh, it says, uh, <clears throat> Now a woman... Uh, having a flow of blood for 12 years who had spent all of her livelihood on physicians uh, and, and could not be healed by any, came from behind and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her flow of blood stopped. Verse 45, and Jesus said, who touched me? Uh, when all denied it, uh, Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitudes throng and press you, but you say, who touched me? But Jesus said, somebody touched me, for I perceive power going out from me. Now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, uh, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason that she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said to her, Daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Let's pray together. Father, as we uh, come to you uh, this evening, we uh, ask that you would just uh, help to open our hearts, open our minds uh, to your word today. Lord, may your Holy Spirit uh, speak to each and every one of our hearts in a very special way today as we look at this very special passage. Father, for those that are going through circumstances and situations that need to hear from you and your word today, I pray uh, that your Holy Spirit would speak to them. Lord, I know that you will. I know that you want to. Uh, Lord, I pray that, that each and every one of us will go away from this time around your word, having been blessed in, in some way, shape, form, or fashion, uh, because you are God and we are not. So bless our time, Father. Use this, your, your servant, for these moments that you truly would be high and lifted up. And Lord, we pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I, I mentioned to you before that this was going to be one of those passages that, uh, that you had probably heard of before. There have been 
songs and poems and and sermons of all different types that have been uh, preached on the touching of the hem uh, of the garment of Christ. And this is the story uh, behind all of those statements and songs and and poems that that, that we had heard. Uh, And what we have is we have a story of, of a woman who is in great trouble. Now I want you to think about the circumstances and situations, and we'll delve into them here in just a, a, a few minutes. But in her life, yeah, there was desperation. She had tried everything, nothing else to do. There was determination on her behalf to get to the one uh, who could who could deliver her. There was deliverance that came along with that. And then after that, there was a declaration. So uh, if you were a sermon writer, this one would fall in, uh, fall in nicely because they all begin with the Ds. There was desperation, determination, deliverance, uh, as well as declaration uh, of who Jesus was in, in his power. Uh, uh, and, and what she did was she simply went to touch the hem of his garment. Now let's let, let's look in our text and and let's d- dive a little bit deeper uh, into what the word is telling us. Now uh, there was a story of of her problem, uh, essentially all in one verse. Look with me uh, if you would at verse forty three once again. Everything is given to us right there. It says now. Uh, a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years, that's a long time, who had spent all of her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any. In other words, she had tried everything. She had been to every doctor she could think of. If you if you wanted to look at it in today's terminology, she had been to every specialist that there was out there to no avail. Nobody could pinpoint her problem. Nobody uh, could uh, not only pinpoint her problem, but nobody could, could heal her uh, of her problem. Uh, she had an incurable disease, this sickness that, that nobody uh, could help her with. Uh, you know, all the doctors are anybody else for that matter. And what she had done is she had gone uh, through this time, this 12 years, and she had spent everything that she had, all of her money. Uh, If you wanted to look at it like today, all of her savings, everything that she had, uh, she spent that on doctors. I'm sure they didn't have an insurance plan uh, or you could pay on time back then like you could now. So she spent everything that she had on these physicians uh, at, you know, physically. That, that, was, that was part of the physical aspect. She had a physical problem. Uh, there were situations that she had spent all of her money on. And not only that, she was also uh, considered to be, because of having a, a blood flow issue, she was considered ceremonially unclean. So when you think about it, look at it from the physical side. There was physical desperation. Her health was gone. Uh, this was something that, that that haunted her day and night. And as the word tells us, she had had that for 12 years. So physically, she was desperate, desperately, uh, or desperate. Financially, she was desperate. Her money was gone. She had spent everything that she had had. There was nothing left. Uh, even I, I would believe to, and, and say at this particular point that even if she wanted to go see another doctor, there, there wasn't any way she could do it because she didn't have the financial resources by which to do it. So she was physically desperate. She was financially desperate. And she was also spiritually desperate. She could not enter the temple because of her circumstance or her situation. This was something that was separating her from God. And folks, you know, when you think about it, she is a picture of all people today based on on those three uh, items that I mentioned a moment ago. Think about it for just a minute. Physically, we are all moving toward death. The Bible tells us that it is appointed unto man once to die, and after this, the judgment. Too many times we we, we get comfortable with where we are, and we don't think about the the, the fact. We think that death is for those a long way uh, down the road. Uh, As many of you you know, I lost a very, very close friend uh, not too long ago, and and that wasn't expected. Very young man. Uh, There are so many people that that will get up to start their day tomorrow, and they will never go home. We don't know what time that's going to be. So we need to be ever present uh, and ready, uh, particularly in our business with the Lord. So every one of us, if you're listening to my voice today, you are moving toward death. You started dying when you took your first breath. Okay, so we all have an appointment with the grave physically. All right. Secondly, there was the financial issue. Issue. Remember, we're talking about how she is a picture of all people today. Financially, money cannot buy what you truly, truly need. 
Uh, and, and that is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Money cannot buy that. Money can buy a lot of things. Money can put you in positions to do different things, but money cannot buy uh, what, and, and particularly the story we're looking at today, it didn't matter how much money she had. Money could not buy the solution to her problem uh, as is told here in the Word of God. It wouldn't have mattered if she was a millionaire. That still did not solve her problem. Okay, so again, she's a picture of all of us physically, she's a picture of all of us financially, and she is a picture of all of us spiritually because sin separates us from God. Remember what I said a moment ago, because she was ceremonially unclean, she could not enter the temple. Uh, she couldn't be there. And, and it, it just blows my mind today to think about so, uh, so many people in our life and in our society that have the opportunity to be with God's people, to gather around God's Word, and yet we flippantly just don't do that. Other things take the place. Other things seem to be more important. How are we spiritually? You know, it's, it's ironic that, that some people even told me you know, as we went through the, the, the pandemic, they said, I didn't really realize how much I was going to miss church when we had that span where we, uh, where we actually couldn't go. Uh, and, and it's kind of like that situation that you, you never really know what you have until it's gone. Uh, folks, let's take advantage of the times and opportunities that we have as God's people to be able to come together for his honor, for his glory. So you know, remember, the, those three things that, that we see about this, this woman, but uh, physically, financially, and spiritually represent each and every one of us in this world today. Now, this was a woman uh, who had determination. I love what verse 44 tells us. Look with me at verse 44. It says, uh, uh, it came up from behind and touched the border of his garment and immediately her flow of blood stopped. Um, this lady was determined. She looked around. Now, as we know and as we've read throughout the Bible, there were crowds and crowds uh, of people that followed Jesus, thousands upon thousands at a time. Uh, when he was moving to and fro, they would gather around. There were times when the word would say that they were pressed in uh, against one another. It, it kind of reminds me of, of times before where I've seen where somebody's waiting to get into some sort of an event and they all line up at a gate and it just seems like for some odd reason they, they just keep pushing forward even when the gate's closed and everybody's getting squished in there. Uh, but here was a woman who was determined. She felt like Jesus had the, the solution to her problem. She trusted that he had it. But then she ran into a problem, how to get to him. you know. And then having an audience with him, she felt like was going to be completely impossible because Jesus was busy. He was on his way going somewhere. But man, I loved her faith. Her faith said, if I could just get close enough to him, just to touch the hem of his garment, that would be enough. I believe that would be enough to provide the healing that would that would come from him. Yeah, I don't even want to bother him. You know, I'd love to be able to share my story with him, but I can't because of the way the crowds are. If I could just wiggle my way through this crowd and just reach up and touch the hem of his garment, I believe. Did you get that? I believe. I will be healed because of the power of who Jesus is. It says she came up uh, behind and touched the border or the hem of his garment. You know, think about this for a minute. There were so many things to discourage this woman from coming to Jesus. Think about the, the, those great crowds, the multitudes of people that were milling around, that were close to him, that, that wanted to, to be present with him for whatever reason. I'm sure there were some that's reasoning was less than pure about why they wanted to be uh, near uh, Christ. I'm, I'm sure if it was today, there would be people who would want to get up there in such a position that they could position themselves to take a selfie or something just to, to show that they had uh, had been with Jesus. Think about what uh, the, about the attitude of, of the disciples at that particular point. Yeah, you know, they're probably sitting back going, yeah, give the man some room. Let, yeah, let him get through. You know, I, for, yeah, there were times when the disciples had a really terrible attitude towards those who needed Jesus the most. And that can be found today uh, in, in churches as well. Uh, but but there was the think about the importance of uh, of, of his mission, about what Jesus was doing. He says he was going to the people. He was going that, that they might be healed, not only physically, but, but that they might be healed spiritually as well. Yeah. And think about 
her own appearance. This is a woman who's been uh, been, been having an issue of blood for 12 years. Uh, she probably was anemic. She probably was very pale. Uh, she was probably you know poor. Uh, fi- well, we know she was poor financially because she had had spent you know pretty much everything uh, that that she had. And by the way, you know for the sake of time, I won't go there. But jot this down. You might want to look at the, the the telling of this passage in the book of Mark, uh, Mark's Gospel, chapter five, and particularly. Uh, uh, verse uh, 28 uh, gives the, the thoughts that, that she had. Now, regardless of everything that was against her, regardless of how discouraging this journey uh, may have seemed for her at this particular point, she was determined to get to Jesus and still she pressed through to get to him. I'm sure she was probably saying, excuse me, excuse me, pardon me, uh, but yet she didn't let that deter her. You know, whether somebody was in her way, she wiggled her way through because for her, she had to get to the only solution for her problem, and that was Jesus. She still pressed on. And then as she did, uh, she found something great that happened. She did exactly, uh, you know, what she anticipated on doing. You know, she wasn't planning on bothering Jesus. She was just going to say, if I could just touch the hem of that garment, that, that, then I'll be made well. And that's what she did. But then something happened. Now, I love the fact of what it says in verses 45 and 46. Um, well, let me back up just a little bit in verse 44. Because it gets to the point where it says that she touched the hem of his garment and something happened. Now, notice what it says at the end of verse 44. And even immediately, not later, not a few days later, not sometime down the road, not two hours later, immediately her flow of blood stopped. This was something that that she was aware of. She knew that this had happened. She knew that she had been healed. She knew that this had taken place. Now look with me at verses 45 and 46. It says, and Jesus said, who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those with him uh, said, uh, said, you know, said this. Let's say it, denied it. And those with him said, uh, and you say, who touched me? In other words, they were like, what do you mean who touched you? Look look around you. Look at the crowd of people that are here. How do we know who, who touched you? Now, I also want to ask you this question. Do you think Jesus knew who touched him? Absolutely. Jesus knew exactly where that touch came from. You know, if, if this lady, if Jesus hadn't said anything, I believe this lady would have let the crowd pass on by and she would have gone about her way just as happy as could be because uh, the faith that she had in Christ and his power, just touching the hem of his garment, healed her problem. And she knew that. At this particular point, she knew she had been healed immediately she had been healed. And then Jesus is like, who touched me? Who was that that touched me? I don't know what sort of voice that he said it in. I don't know whether it was a, a calming voice. I don't know whether it was a, a voice that may have insinuated that he was angry that somebody touched him. But whatever it was, nobody was volunteering to say that it was them, including this particular lady. Notice what it says. It says in verse 45, when all denied it, the lady who touched the hem of his garment wasn't speaking up either. It says everybody had denied it. And then, you know, of course, uh, 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 it says when all denied it, Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitudes throng and press you. And you say, who touched me? That was their, their way of saying, how are we supposed to know who touched you, man? There's too many people up here. We, you know, we don't know. And of course, you and I both know as well as they should have known. Jesus knew exactly who it was that touched him. Then in verse 46, it says, But Jesus said, Somebody touched me, for I perceived power going out from me. You know, in other words, he knew that that healing power had gone away from him. Now, it, it, it would be insane to, to sit back and act like Jesus didn't know who it was or what was taking place. Jesus already knew all that in the same way that he knows each and everything about you and I. He already knows, okay? Yeah, her deliverance came from contact with Jesus. That touch of his garment was the touch of faith. That's one of the things that I love about it. Matter of fact, in verse 48, Jesus says, yeah, tells her to go her way. Her faith has made her whole. I want you to think about faith for a minute. Uh, faith is defined as the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. This lady really, truly believed with all of her heart that even if she could just get close enough to, to, to touch the garment of Jesus, that, that that would be enough. She believed with all of her heart that just by doing that, it could cure her problem. It could heal her. And here's the interesting part. She was absolutely right. 
Her faith was strong. She didn't go up there saying, well, I'm going to give this a try, uh, you know, and it, it, it may or may not work. She honestly believed with all of her heart that just to be able to touch that hem of his garment was going to bring the healing that, that, that she needed. And guess what? She was right. It did. She exercised far greater faith than she thought that she ever could. Yeah, she was thinking that she was going to sneak in there, maybe touch the hem of his garment, and then uh, you know falter off. But yet, when she's called on the carpet, she finally stands up and she says, "Jesus, it was me. I'm the one uh, who touched the hem of your garment." Okay, she got more than what she what, than what she came for. Think about it for a minute. Her illness was healed, and it was healed immediately. And not only was her her physical illness healed, she became a child of God. And I love you know people sit back and say, "Well, how do you?" know that? How do you know that she became a child of God that day? Look at what it was that Jesus told her. Jesus told her in the end, daughter. What does that imply? That implies family. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. We are sons and daughters of the Father. So for him to actually call her daughter meant that she was in the family. Daughter, go in peace. Man, isn't that great? And when you, when you think about it, you know, because of her faith, remember how we're saved, folks. We are saved by grace through faith and that not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. It was the faith that Jesus saw in this woman, not only in his healing power, but in who he was as the Christ. Yeah, the, the son of the living God, the power that he came in. And because of that, because of her belief, because of her faith, that day she became a daughter of the Most High. And here's the great part. We'll have a chance to sit back and talk with her about this when we get to heaven as well. We'll be able to have her tell in her own words the story of what it was like when she slipped through that crowd to touch the hem of the garment of our Savior. Now, uh, it's interesting as we go on, we begin to see uh, her declaration. Let me just carry you on down to verses uh, 47 and 48. It says, now when the woman saw uh, that, that she was not hidden, in other words, she couldn't uh, hide behind anybody anymore, uh, she came trembling and falling down before him, she declared to him in the presence of all uh, of the people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. Do you see what's going on? She was giving her testimony. Jesus knew this was going to happen all the time. In other words, she said, well, the reason I did this is because I've had this issue of blood. I've spent all my money on doctors. They weren't able to heal me, but I believed in the, that, that Jesus could. But I saw that he was busy, and I just did the best I could just to get to him, just to, to touch his garment. And when I did, I was healed immediately uh, of the physical ailment. And then and she could have gone on to say as well as the spiritual ailment that she had. But she's basically given a testimony. Now, down in verse 48, it says, And he said to her daughter, remember what I said a moment ago, daughter, she's in the family, Be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Now, what I love about that is not only had her faith made her well uh, physically, her faith made her well spiritually. You know, she knew that, 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 that there's a God in heaven and that he has a, a son and, and Jesus. And she had been close enough to touch the hem of his garment. He had been, you know, she had been faithful enough to believe and he was faithful enough to heal not only her physical ailment, but her spiritual ailment as well. I love what he said. Jesus said, who touched me? Jesus knew. There are many who surround Christ today who do not touch him. Yet you, you, you're walking uh, like you're part of the family, but yet you're doing so like Peter was uh, during the, the trial of the crucifixion. You're walking from afar. You haven't touched. You haven't experienced Jesus. You haven't gotten in. He hasn't, it hasn't been to a point in your life where you have been so far down and so far on your back that the only way that you could look was up and the Lord showed up in a mighty way. Some of you know and have experienced that. And and that has helped you to understand the value of that walk with Christ and his power and what he can do. And they should be faith builders and strength builders as we go forward that when things look the darkest, God still can make a way. Notice her simple testimony. 
She told why she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. Her testimony is still heard today. We're talking about it right here now. Several thousand years later, we're still talking about the testimony of this lady whom Jesus had touched and healed. Folks, that's all Jesus wants us to do. Jesus wants you and I to tell people our testimony. Nobody else can tell your testimony except for you. What Jesus has done in your life uh, is, is special and specific to you. But you telling that story to others will grant hope. You telling your story to others will grant strength to, to not only hang on, but to trust Jesus in the tough, tough times. Are you telling your story? Yeah, I think about it. Her testimony 2,000 plus years later is still being heard today. You just heard it. You just heard it from me straight out of the Word of God. Okay, so what do we need to do in the midst of our trials and our circumstances and our situations? You know, instead of uh, letting you know, letting us spend all of our, uh, our our finances and everything else trying to solve the problem ourselves, why don't we just carry it to Jesus with true trust and with true faith that He can handle the situations that are before us because He can. You know, what is it that that is preventing us from pushing through the crowd? to get to Jesus? Is it, the, is it the fear of what others will say? Is it the, the fear of the way others may label us as a religious goody two-shoe or, or whatever else you might think? Is it the fear that somebody might think that we're mentally unstable? You know, I keep hearing this thing more and more uh, in our society today where, where people are talking about a, a, a fake or an imaginary made-up God. Folks, let me tell you something. I, my only answer to that is simply this. One day, every knee will bow, and one day, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, including those uh, who make fun, including those who do not believe that there is such a, a place as heaven and hell. They're going to find out soon enough. Hopefully, they will discover Christ much sooner and not have to spend that eternity in hell. What if this woman in our, in our passages today had not pressed through? What if she would allow the discouraging things to keep her from going forward? What if she had just said, well, there's too many people. I can't get to Jesus. You know, I'm just, I'm just going to quit. I'm going to go on home. I'm going to be discouraged. I've tried everything else and it's failed. This is just, you know, one more uh, log on top of the pile of everything else that has failed. And, and how many people do that today? Man, you could be the touch of the hem of his garment away from one of the greatest things that the Lord wants to do in and through your life. But you've got to press through. Will you be like this lady today? Will you not be discouraged by the crowds? Will you not be discouraged about the, the, the way life has treated you? Maybe for years and years like this woman, but she was not discouraged. She said, I'm broke. I got nothing to lose. I'm going to press my way through to the master. But I will tell you this. I will make you one promise. I will promise that when you uh, prepare to try to get to Jesus, Satan is going to put every obstacle in your way. He is going to try to discourage you. He He's going to try to keep you from getting to Christ. Don't let him do that. Plow through if you need to. But no matter what you do, get to Jesus because he's got the power for you. And, oh, and here's another thing. He knows where you are. He knows who you are in the crowd. Will you press on? Will you press through? Come with your need to Jesus, whatever it may be. And I can make you the promise that when you do, he's going to do some extremely special things in your life. Okay? Press on to Jesus. In just a moment, I'm going to pray that each and every one of us will have the uh, the, the spiritual strength uh, to be able to do that. But I want to let you know what we're going to be doing uh, for this week. Uh, I'm actually going to be uh, doing a, a several-part uh, series uh, that, that's going to be coming up uh, starting next week. Uh, so instead of giving you five different chapters, I want to give you one to kind of study in depth as you can. So for this week, I want you uh, to, to read the book of Jonah chapter 1. Jonah chapter 1. Now, I don't want to say just read it, study it, dig through it, because next week we're going to look at the city that God wanted to save 
out of the book of Jonah chapter 1. So I want you to be prepared for that. Uh, what a great, great book and what a great example that we have uh, on some lessons learned and some things that, that, that God wants uh, for you and I. So uh, Jonah chapter 1, that's your homework for this week. And we'll look forward to uh, uh, gathering once again uh, at the same place, same time, uh, that the Lord may uh, speak to each and every one of us and bless us in a special way. Let's look to the Lord in a word of prayer. Our Father, as we come to you now, we're so grateful for the example of this woman, uh, Lord, who, who through trials and tribulations and many years of them, uh, yeah, finally came to the conclusion that there was no other answer except through you. And Lord, as she tried to make her way to you, I can imagine the thousands of people that must have been pressed in around you. But Lord, she wasn't discouraged. Lord, for those today who see the crowds and they're discouraged, I pray that you will encourage them to get through the crowd to you no matter what, no matter what their circumstance, no matter what their situation. God, I pray that they will plow through to get to your son where healing is available, Lord, where physical healing is av available, where spiritual healing is available, where financial healing is av available, where each and every kind of healing that we need is available. Lord, help us not to be discouraged by the things that we see that are that are obstacles that are between you and I. But Lord, may we truly be on a uh, on a mission and have a vision to get to you no matter what. Lord, I ask a special blessing upon each and every person that has uh, taken the time to gather with us around your word today. May you bless them and their families. And Lord, may they walk closer to you today than they did yesterday. And then tomorrow, even better than they did today. And Lord, we'll be careful to praise you as we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, folks, God bless you. Thank you for joining us for the Wednesday Bible Study of Central Baptist Church of Oak Ridge, North Carolina. As always, if you don't have a church home, we would love for you to come visit with us. We're located at 1715 Highway 68 North in Oak Ridge, North Carolina. If you are familiar with the area, we're right across uh, the street from the Oak Ridge Military Academy. Highway 68 runs between us. So come on down. We would love to see you. We have worship services on Sunday beginning at 1045. I pray that I'll see you this week. God God bless you.